Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about what happens to pilots when they get lost, or if they even do. Now, in the world of aviation, it can be a little unclear if you're not in that world to begin with, how all of this works. So I'm going to be breaking it down for you, and hopefully, if you're a nervous flyer and have been concerned about this, this video can help put your mind at ease. Now, just so you know, this video is a general overview, so we won't go into the hard details. It would take a little too much time to cover. <laughs> but if you'd like to know more or have a question, feel free to comment below and I'd be happy to answer you. Now for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Cassandra. I'm a certified flight instructor. Before that, I briefly worked on the line for Delta Airlines as a flight attendant. So this channel is all about the world of aviation, whether you're interested in becoming a pilot, a flight attendant, or you're just interested in the aviation industry in general. Welcome. This channel is for you. And I'm so glad that you're here. So let's get into it. Now, if pilots were able to get lost, it kind of begs the question, how do we navigate through the air to begin with? The aviation world is trending in the direction of the GPS. That sounds kind of familiar, right? Just like you, we utilize our GPS to ensure we know where we're going. But the main reason why we as pilots use this GPS is because it's typically the most efficient method of navigation in terms of time and accuracy, which just means that it's least likely to poop out on us and it's easily reconfigured if we need to change our route of flight. So if we're redirected and ATC, for instance, air traffic control, the people who organize the sky so nobody crashes into each other, basically, they tell us, hey, we changed our minds, you're gonna go this way instead. And we can just go, okay, poop poop and change our route of flight really easily instead of having to plug all these different things in manually. Now, if you're an airline pilot, for instance, you're likely not going to get lost for many reasons. One of them is that you're sticking to what we call a flight plan, which is a pre-planned route to your destination, and it's also plugged into your GPS to show you exactly where you need to go. This also means that if you deviate from it or go against it, ATC, again, will bring this to your attention before it becomes a problem. So they'll likely say, hey, it looks like you're going off track. Do you know where you're going? But likely that isn't a problem because the second thing that happens is most of the time the big guys are utilizing their autopilot. So we take off and usually when we're en route to our destination, the autopilot takes over and it becomes our responsibility to monitor our navigation systems to make sure that nothing is going awry and if it does start acting up then we can manually override it and start hand flying the aircraft now if you're in the early stages of training to become a pilot for instance when you're flying solo the first couple of times it can happen that you can get lost it's not very common but it's more likely to happen during this stage of your career because everything is new for one and during this time we don't typically follow flight plans or even use advanced GPS navigation equipment like you see here. Rather, the ones you'll likely be trained in look a little bit more like this. This GPS system shows you the distance from your target and which direction you need to go in order to reach it, but that's about it. It's very bare bones. So when you're flying, it just says, hey, head in this direction and you're however many miles away from your destination. So then what would happen if you did get lost? Pilots of all stages can be prone to this issue of pride so no one is immune to this. It's all really just a personality thing when you're faced with adversity or a scary situation when you're in the air. If you ever get a feeling in the pit of your stomach that feels like something is uncomfortable for you, reach out for help and contact ATC, air traffic control, and let them know that you're lost, for instance, or that you're running low on fuel and you wanna declare an emergency. Situations like that happen to pilots of every stage in their career and it's extremely important to trust your instincts and it might just save your life. There's never any reason to be afraid and there's never a reason to not ask for help. Now, for those of you who like to rabbit hole, like me, <laughs> you might find yourself asking, well, what if you can't reach ATC? Say your headphones break or you no longer have a viable connection with ATC? What happens in this situation? Well, your GPS or your navigation system is still going to work even if your headphones don't. So we can still determine where we need to go. The only difference here is under these circumstances, we have to put in a code that transmits to ATC to let them know that we can't hear them. So there are different factors that we have to consider that 
I won't go over here because it would just take too much time. This is an overview video, but essentially all that really happens when you lose communication with ATC or your headphones break is you type in that code and then hopefully you've done all of your calculations you need to on the ground and you can continue on to your destination airport because your GPS is still working. Now, of course, everyone is different, so it depends on the route of flight, your comfortability level with that route. So I typically recommend landing as soon as practical. So whenever it's safest for you to land somewhere, instead of trying to go, say, three, four hours without any connection with ATC, I would just land somewhere, get your connection checked to make sure that everything is safe and secure, instead of going completely static. For that long but again it's a comfortability level it's your own personal feeling of safety that's really important because atc will make sure that they redirect traffic away from you as you're flying since you can't contact anybody right you have no connection so then one of our aircraft's integrated navigation systems so in this case our gps were to fail then we're definitely in trouble right we have no working headphones no gps that works well I always maintain the mindset of whatever can go wrong, will. So I pack this thing called an EFB, or electronic flight bag, which is basically just a fancy word for an iPad with an app. Now this app is actually really cool and many of us use it. It contains flight information and publications, so it's kind of like an aviation virtual library. It holds everything you'll need to navigate from airport to airport under any circumstance. And this app, if you're curious, is called ForeFlight, and this is not a sponsored video. Similarly to the documents my iPad can hold, I also take every publication I would need to reference on my route of flight on paper as well. So just in case my EFB fails on me, I can use my paper documents to help me get to my destination. So if my headphones were to have broken and my plane's integrated GPS system failed and my EFB were to have pooped out on me, I would be safe by using just my paper documents and one of the two techniques that you'll learn when you're in training in flight school. Now, to save you the suspense, I'll tell you these two techniques that you can use if you're lost. And these two techniques are called dead reckoning and pilotage. Pilotage is when you pay close attention to what is around you in reference to the ground to determine where you are. It's kind of like driving around and using a paper map. So you know how you would determine where you are based on roads and landmarks when you're in the car? That's exactly what pilotage is. It utilizes a map, which we call sectional or attack. They both share the same sentiment. But instead of looking around you this way to determine where you are, you're going to be looking this way, so down and around because of course you're in the air, right? <laughs> now, Dead Reckoning has you note the last place you were before the GPS went out or where you were when you lost track of your location, for instance. And by doing specific calculations in the air from where you got lost, you can determine where you will have ended up from that point. So for instance, if you lose track of your location and you do a certain calculation and say, okay, in 10 minutes, I'll be here, you can keep track from the time you got lost, continue tracking in that direction that you're flying, and then you can say, oh, the 10 minutes are up, I'm now located here. And if you'd like a video on how to calculate that, if you'd like a video on pilotage to go further in depth, I'm more than happy to do that for you as well. So that's pretty much it. If you ever find yourself flying with a friend, flying by yourself, hiring somebody to fly you around, now you know that most pilots come extremely prepared and expect the worst to happen. So if they do get lost, which likely won't happen, they can use all of these resources in order to get them and you back on track. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it useful, entertaining, helpful, etc. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up so I know that you appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.